dear people of God, come, let's journey together following the light. God's light will bring peace, comfort, and His presence will bring love, confidence, and joy. God is coming to us. Make room for Him. God's most gracious gift, God's Son, Jesus Christ, who is coming to reclaim His people. In the fullness of time, God sent His only Son, that the world would know forever that God is with us. Come, rejoice, open our hearts and spirit to receive the blessings of God. Please, pray with me. Come to this place and help us to experience your presence. We are in need of your peace, your hope, your love, and your joy, O oh God. Just like how Mary proclaimed her faithful participation in God's most miraculous gift. Open our hearts this day, Lord, to receive the words and the blessings. To be fed, then to be uh, someone who share this blessing with others. We pray and commit this service into your hand. We ask your Father to help us and bless us. Help us to experience your presence. In Jesus' precious name we offer this prayer. Amen and Amen. Please enjoy this service. We live on the brink every day. We stand on the threshold between this world and the next one. We live and move between the ordinary and divine, between the mundane and the mystery. Too often we forget to look up and see the angels in our living room. We forget that the love we give and live is a sign of eternity, God with us, right now. We forget that company is coming. Luke tells us that God's favor came to a girl, an ordinary girl. It might have been you or your daughter. It might have been the girl down the street or your grandchild. But the messenger of God came and greeted her and said, The Lord is with you. What a gift and a promise. Emmanuel, God is with us. We light these candles with peace in our hearts for the promise of proximity, the nearness of God. Even when we forget to listen, to lean into that presence, God is as close as our own breath. This, in a confused and confusing world, is a peace that still passes all understanding. It's the peace that knows that company is coming. O come, O come, Emmanuel. I play. 
Jesus was born, Mary and Joseph were about to have a baby. Now for a couple, having a baby is a pretty exciting time in their life. And it also means they have to make a lot of decisions. And one of the biggest decisions they make is the baby's name. And they want it to be a good name because it's going to be that person's name the rest of their lives. Some people use family names. Some people buy a book of names and pick one that kind of stands out to them. And some people name their children based off the meaning of their name. Now I have looked up some of the meanings of your guys' names, just a few of you. Here they are. Cadmel is who stands before God. Kieran is pure. And from the Old Testament, Kieran was one of Job's three daughters. Bo means handsome. Wyatt means guide. Rhett means ardent, fiery, advice. Jace means healer. Kylie has a possible origin from Western Australia, and her name is similar to the word in their native language for boomerang. That's pretty fun. Cash means wealthy man or maker of chests. Everett means hardy or brave. Rider means knight or mounted warrior. Declan means full of goodness or man of prayer. Jack means God is gracious. Aiden means fiery. Allie means friend or partner. That was so much fun, right? And if I didn't read your name and the meaning, that's okay. You can ask your mom or dad or someone to help you look up the meaning of your name. And sometimes there are different meanings, so you could have a variety of meanings for your name. Well, back when Mary and Joseph were about to have a baby, they didn't have a book of names to look up a name for him. And in fact, they didn't have to. God named their baby for them. He sent an angel, and an angel came to Mary. And to Mary, the angel said, You will have a son, and you will call his name Jesus. The name Jesus means the Lord saves. Jesus is a very, very special and important name. Because in Acts 4.12, it says that there's no other name that can save us from our sin. Isn't that amazing and so special and very important? There's no other name that can save us from our sin. Jesus saves us from our sins, right? Right. Will you guys pray with me about that? Thank you so much. You can bow your heads and repeat after me. Dear God... We thank you for sending your son during this season when we celebrate his birth. Help us to remember there's salvation in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you so much, everyone, and I will see you on Christmas Eve. Did you know that your baby boy would 
But one day walk on water Mary, did you know That your baby boy Would save our sons and daughters Did you know That your baby boy Has come to make you new This child that you deliver Will soon deliver you Mary, did you know that your baby boy would give sight to a blind man. Mary, did you know that your baby boy would calm the storm with his hand? Did you know that your baby boy has walked where angels trod? When you kiss your little baby, then you kiss the face of God. Mary, did you know? The blind will see, the deaf will hear, the dead will live again. The lame will leave, the dumb will speak, the brave Did you know that your baby boy is Lord of all creation? Mary, did you know that your baby boy will one day rule the nations? Did you know that your baby boy is heaven's perfect love? This sleeping child you're holding is the grave. nativity set that my mom that we donated to the church after my mom passed away it's actually been 10 years sorry um, she had started making this when we lived in Paris Tennessee uh, my dad was in the service uh, it was in the like 1962 and she was making it with her friends in a ceramic class and he got transferred to Memphis, Tennessee before it was finished. So her friends took it upon themselves to finish the nativity set. And then they mailed it to her. Um, as growing up, we always had it on our coffee table in the living room. And it was the highlight of Christmas to see it put up. After her passing, we decided that it would be best um, viewed here at the church where she loved to come. And we would share it with everyone um, that came to church. So I hope everybody enjoys this when they, can, when they are able to see it. Thank you. Merry Christmas, everyone. My mom also was the Sunday school teacher in the nursery part of the uh, church for over 40 years, which she always brought her marshmallows and thermos of milk. For those of you that were in her class, you will definitely remember that. Carla has asked me to show you one of our favorite Christmas items that we put out. And we have a choir of angels that our daughter gave us for Christmas one year. And the one will sing. And then the others join in to make a choir. So now we can take these and we can place them around the room and, and we can have a choir surrounding us. And John's placing them around our room where he likes to put them.
So this is our angel choir that we get to listen to. Every time we walk by one, we push it and enjoy the music. Have a Merry Christmas. Good morning, everyone. This is Diana, and Carla had asked me to share a few of my nativities that I have out throughout my house. This one is on my front porch, and Carla actually made this one. I hang it out here every year. This is one I have in my bathroom downstairs. I really like this one, and I have one more out on the front porch, but it's raining, so wishing you all a very Merry Christmas and a wonderful new year. I was asked to share some of my nativities that I have set up throughout my house. This one is one that I have in my uh, spare bedroom. This is also one I leave up year round on my windowsill. As I come down the stairs, I see it and I always remember to believe in the miracles of Jesus. This one sets in the cabinet that Brett made in high school. Nativity scene was given to us by Doug's brother and wife, Greg and Teresa, and it also stays up all year round. This is my main nativity scene. The barn, I believe, was made for me by Carla, and it sets on our buffet as you come in our uh, back door, and um, I just love everything about it. Um, this year I was thinking about um, Christmas music. I really like music and it dawned on me to get my carolers back up. I've always been a strong fan of quartets and octets that could sing a cappella music and dressed in these old costumes. Always been kind of a, a neat thing. So these are some that I put outside this year. And of course the purpose of their caroling is to sing praises and tell the story of the Christ child's birth. The main reason for our Christmas season, of course. Have a great Christmas time. Hi, this is Kathy. Um, I'm going to read you Luke 1, 47 through 55. It's from the New International Version. And my spirit rejoices in the God my Savior, 
for he has been mindful of the humble state of his servant. From now on, all generations will call me blessed, for the Mighty One has done great things for me. Holy is his name. His mercy extends to those who fear him from generation to generation. He has performed, performed mighty deeds with his arm. He has scattered those who are proud in their inmost thoughts. He has brought down rulers from their thrones, but he has lifted up the humble. He has filled the hungry with good things, but has sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel, remembering to be merciful to Abraham and his descendants forever, just as he promised our ancestors. If you have any prayer concerns, please send it to us. We would love to intercede on behalf of you to our God and our loving Savior. God bless you. Please continue to pray for one another. Continue to pray for our community and our school, our children, so that they will continue to experience God's miracles and healing. Please pray with me. As we all face with the challenge to focus on the true meaning of Christmas, the incarnation of God, the birth of God's Son, Jesus Christ, please help us, God, to find time for you and your work on this earth. Help us to have the deepest sense of joy, love, hope, and peace. Help us to respond to your call, your comfort, your love, and your mercy. Help us to be continuously reminded that Jesus is the reason for the season. Help us to place those words truly in our heart. Come to us, O God, with your healing. Help us to remember the witness of Mary, a peasant young girl, who never expected to play such a crucial role in salvation history. O oh Lord, your world today needs a savior more than ever. Come, O oh God, come. We stand in the gap for our community, our school, our leaders, in our church and in our community. We stand in the gap for our nation and for those who are struggling, suffering, are in discomfort, faced with sickness and other emotional and mental health challenges. Heal our community, heal our brokenness, our friends and our family. We pray for our nation and for our neighborhood. Just Mary the mother was Theotokos, the bearer of God. Help us to carry your name, your presence, your love and your grace to our world. Let the darkness depart and light comes, O oh God. Help us to receive the light. Let the prejudice, discrimination, exploitation, conquest, turmoil, abuse, fear, all of them depart. Open our eyes, our hearts, our ears and our spirits. Help us to witness to your most blessed gift, your Son Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those that trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen and Amen. Gospel according to Luke chapter 1 verses 47 to 55. The title of my conversation today is Advent, walking with Mary. I'm sure if there is anyone who lived on this planet to tell us a story of Advent and Christmas, if there is anyone who can authoritatively tell us the story, it is the mother of Jesus. And I'm sure she has more authority and her witness is more authentic than any other witness. She is the one individual who has been who has seen everything from death from birth to death even beyond for the last many weeks we were exploring the story of advent from the framework of the prophet isaiah 
Mary's song is a story about fear and hope, sorrow and joy, anticipation and fulfillment. It tells us a deep faith in God and steadfast loyalty to her son, the son of God. Our reading from the Gospel according to Luke is a story of her own version or perspective of retelling the original story. Here you discover Jesus presented as never before, both as divine son and a human hero. With matchless, he is a comforter, transforms and he brings deliverance. The story is the story of all other stories ever told in human history. It is the most enthralling character in human history. It, takes, it talks about a life uh, larger than the world itself. It all comes to culmination with a peasant mother. Angel Gabriel did not stop in Jerusalem or in Judea. I mean, Angel Gabriel ignored the temple and the most holy place and entered into a home, tiny home of Mary, a young woman. Accomplished nothing much according to the world, according to Apocrypha, Gospel of the birth of Mary, she was only 14 years of age. And the history of Joseph the carpenter states that she was only 12 years when Jesus was born. She might be illiterate. Her knowledge about the world script, or scripture might be limited. Nothing extraordinary with her. She was a nobody in a nothing town in the middle of nowhere. At the greatest news ever told to human history or ever told to Israel came into the humblest of its people. When you encounter God or God reality in your life, all you could do is to enter in worship and in an awe start magnifying his presence in humble obedience. Nine months later, Christmas Day, the reality of his coming into human home become a reality. Even today, the world may tune into Rome, Jerusalem, Geneva or Canterbury for a religious announcement, not in a poor neighborhood. The Incarnation, Salvation, Advent and Christmas are not truly found among the proud and self-sufficient but among the poor, ordinary and humble. Mary, the mother of Jesus, is the most admired, inspire, inspirational character who changed the course of history, not only in the biblical framework but throughout human history. No person, whether male or female, has had a great or greater an impact on human civilization than Jesus of Nazareth. He impacted people from all walks of life, across all continents, time period, whether it is uh, to be literature, media, film, science, art, politics, religion, history, business, education, charity or music, no matter what, his action and words are ahead of his time. It always amazes a rational, intelligent, Gnostic mind. Sometimes when we highlight the hero within a story, we ignore the minor characters. Mary, the mother of Jesus, is one of those characters, mostly ignored by the church. Today we are going to meditate the story of Advent and Christmas from her perspective, perspective of Mary, the mother of Jesus. It was her devotion and her sacrificial life to God is picturized in her obedience, despite being greatly troubled by that, the words of the angel Gabriel. Mary responded with faithfulness. She is not afraid to raise her voice, but in the end she chooses obedience. She is visible throughout the biblical gospel narratives and even in the book of Acts playing a major role in relation to this new movement called Ecclesia or Church. One of the most popular Christmas song of all time is Mary Did You Know has dramatically changed the lives of countless listeners. This is one of my favorite Christmas hymns. Mary Did You Know, Life of Jesus from the Perspective of His Mother. Mary, her childhood Growing up in Jewish household, celebrating the annual feast such as Passover and hearing the prophecies about the coming of the Messiah, who would redeem Israel? Mary, did you know? The one who you are waiting, the one 
he is the one who created history, the one who created you, the one who, who is the fulfillment of all the prophecies, the one who will raise the dead and raise the human race from their sins, the righteous branch of David. Mary, did you know that you are part of the solution? In Bible it says in Hebrews chapter 5, 8, in those days and at that time I will cause a righteous branch of David to spring forth and he shall execute justice and righteousness on earth. The public asks the question, is this not the carpenter, the son of Mary, the brother of James, Josie and Judas and Simon? Are not his sisters here with us? And they took offense at him. Mary might probably born in Nazareth, spoke Aramic, and might have developed multi-ethnic linguistic skills because the government official spoke Latin and the Greek was the language of business and education and the Hebrew was the language of Jewish religious life. Led a very ordinary life, paid a lot of tax, lived with relatives and friends, spent most of her time doing household works, very ordinary individual. She might have been trained to do the work inside the house and slept outside the home and engaged in daily hard labor. She lived with Joseph and Jesus and James and Joseph and Judas and Simon and other sisters who were not named in the Bible. She might have had her basic education at home or probably in my rational age says based her education through oral or spoken words orally transmitted from one person to another because technology was not available. Sometimes we see in the picture Mary the gentle, the sweet, dreamy personality but the truth is she was passionate, powerful, proud, enthusiastic. She was the only person who had seen Jesus from life to death on the cross, even to the present in the upper room in Jerusalem with the inauguration of the church or ecclesia, as I said. She also had to go through being a witness of her son's torturous death. Uh, it was the council of Ephesus that condemned Nestorius heresy and rightly proclaimed the holy virgin the mother of God, Theotokos. In uh, other translation, it means the bearer of God. There was a great joy in the streets of Constantinople and throughout the empire because censors of Alexandria won the argument. Even though I do not want to enter into a theological debate or argument about what we believe today over Christotokos or Theotokos, birth giver of Christ or Christ bearer or Theotokos, birth giver of God or the mother of God. I'm not going to enter into a Roman Catholic later on council's belief. The title mother of God, Theotokos, does not mean Mary somehow existed before God or created God, but that Mary gave birth to Jesus who is fully God and fully human. I would like to say Mary's womb was being used. She was a surrogate mother, the first surrogate mother throughout, uh, through an artificial insemination. The Orthodox and the Byzantine tradition of Christianity continue to use this title in their hymn and liturgical, poetically summarizing this complex theological truth. He whom the, uh, the entire universe could not contain was contained within your womb, O Theotokos. Whatever the belief is, but we cannot ignore the fact that Mary played a crucial role in, in the salvation history or saving mankind or bringing God with us in a human form. This is what the Christmas message is all about. Christmas message will force you or drag you into a place of worship where you bring glory, honor and praises to God and God alone because He is worthy of all our praises. Not only that, it is a message of liberation. It is a message where God is with us, God is in us, God is among us. 
friends if god is with you god is in you god is abiding in your in 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 the place where you are what kind of transformation it can bring it it changed a person girl's life totally i'm sure it changed the life of ordinary disciples forever and they will be remembered rest of human history or until he comes dear friends when you choose god when you wait upon god for his coming i'm sure he will bless you he will make you part of god's work on this planet on this world in this world may god bless you with this word please pray with me god our heavenly father we know that we have meditated the story from the perspective of mary the mother we don't know much about it lord we just some of us may we believe because we have not seen it but we believe with our faith we know that you will honor us continue to help us to celebrate because you are the reason you are the reason for the season we proclaim christ coming christ birth christ birth in our heart and we will wait continue to wait for your coming into this world to bring us back to the place where you are continue to help us in jesus precious name we offer this prayer amen and amen Said the night wind to the little lamb, Do you see what I see? Way up in the sky, little lamb, Do you see what I see? A star, a star, dancing in the night, As a kite with a tail as big as a kite, said the little lamb to the shepherd boy, "Do you hear what I hear? Ringing through the sky, shepherd boy." As the sea, with a voice as big as the sea, said the shepherd boy to the mighty king, do you know what I know, in your palace warm mighty Let us bring him silver and Yes, I
Receive this benediction, God of light and peace, in you there is no darkness. Help us to be surprised by your gift and your love. Go in peace, dear friends and family, into this world, and may the God of light, hope, peace, joy shine through and with you today and every day. Go in peace. Amen and Amen. The child, the child, sleeping in the night, he will bring us goodness and light. He will bring us goodness and light.